Welcome to Salvation by Grace, a broadcast ministry of Grace Christian Assembly, a Sovereign Grace Fellowship in Smyrna, Tennessee. For more information, we invite you to visit our website at www.salvationbygrace.org. Now let's join our teacher, Jim McClarty. The word itself doesn't mean falling away from the faith. The word itself simply means depart. All right, uh, we started over there with Tom, yeah? yeah. This is Luke 2.37. Read nice and loud. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. She never left the temple. Left right there is the word apostasia. Okay? Does it mean she left the faith? No. What did she leave? What did she never leave? The temple. The temple. And she didn't defect from it either. And she didn't defect. She simply she never left the temple. Okay. In the King James, it says, she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple. And so it's, it's a form of apostasia, apostato, <laughs> verb form. And then it says what she left, never left the temple, from the temple. You get it? You, okay, let's keep going. Kaylee, you're Luke 4.13, yeah? Okay. Now when the devil has ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Now when the devil had finished the temptations on Jesus, he departed from Jesus till an opportune time. That's the same word. Apostato, verb form of apostasia. He departed from Jesus. Uh, Megan, you've got Luke thirteen twenty seven. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, ye all workers of iniquity. Okay, depart from me. See the depart from? There's always a from. In every one of these instances, the word apostasia only means the departure itself. Then it says from what? Are you getting a feel for this? Because I'm going to say again, when you get to 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and he says, first there comes a departure, he doesn't say, from what? And because he doesn't say, from what? It's bad translation to say, from the faith. Because Paul didn't say it. Instead, he said, the departure comes first. Libby, you've got, you've got Acts 5, 37 and 38. I get After here. this man rose up, Judas of Galilee, in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. Same word. In that case, he drew away many people. Another form of apostasia. Keep going, because it shows up again. Okay. Uh, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. Nope, keep going. Okay. And now, I say to you, refrain. Refrain from these men. From these men. There's the from. Refrain, depart from these men. There's the from. Same word. So refrain was it? Yeah, there it's translated refrain. Same word. So again, are you getting a sense of how this word is translated? It's depart, refrain, separate yourself. But there's always a from. From this. Jennifer, Acts 12.10. And when they had passed the first and second guard, they came to the iron gate that leads into the city, which opened for them by itself. And they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. And immediately the angel what? Uh, departed from him. Okay, departed from. See it? Same thing, same word. That's the way the word is used every single time in the New Testament. Uh, Melissa, I think you're Acts 15, 38. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them, from... <clears throat> Pamphylia. Okay, who departed from what? Yeah. From him. Who departed from him? Are you getting a feel for this? Okay. Acts 19.9? 19.9. Yeah. But when some were hardened and did not believe that spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. Okay, he departed Tyrannus. from them. There's the from. Every time the word shows up, it has a from attached to it. And then I think, Todd, you've got Acts twenty two twenty nine. 29. Then immediately those who were about to examine him withdrew from him. And the commander who was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman because he had bound him. 
Then straightway they departed from him which would have examined him. Departed from. And then 2 Corinthians 12, 8. I think that's you, Tiffany. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Same thing, that it might depart. There's Paul's use of the word, that it might depart from me. I'll read the last two here for you. Paul says, perverse disputing, this is 1 Timothy 6, 5. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Same thing. Depart, withdraw yourself from them. From them withdraw. Same word. Nevertheless, this is 2 Timothy 2.19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. And let every one of you that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Same word, depart from. And finally, Hebrews 3.12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Now, for the first time, we see departure from the living God, but it still has the from in it. Departure from what is established by the context, and that context says from the living God. Is it obvious enough now from a translational point of view? Now, let me show you one more thing. 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Everybody turn there. This is why people think that apostasia, apostasy, means departing from the faith. I wanted to first show you all the other ways it was used so that you would not think that this is the only way it's used in the New Testament. It's used a great many ways in the New Testament always to say departing. And then the departing from is determined by the context. Here's the place in the Bible 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, that speaks specifically about a departure from the faith in the end times and is the reason for the mistranslation in 2 Thessalonians. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. I am in 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. It's the same word, same word. Uh, same word. But it says departing from the faith. Yeah, but if I was trying to argue this with somebody, if, it, if I'm using a Bible that says depart from faith here and depart from faith there, they're not mm -mm. going to believe me. It doesn't say depart from the faith. No, all it says is falling away in the King James. What other translation? What's the NIV say in 2 Thessalonians 3, 2, 3? Apostasy? Yes. Now, do you see what, what happened when they use apostasy? Is they've just transliterated the Greek word into the English and just said apostasy and left you to figure out what it means. With the connotation of falling away from the faith. But the word apostasia, the word that they are transliterating, means departure. And then what you're departing from is determined by the context. So the King James went with falling away. A really bad translation. Well, mine's worse. What's it say? Rebellion. Rebellion. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Can you see the confusion that there is around this word? Can you see how far we've gone from people just transliterating it to people going all the way to rebellion, to people going to falling away, and the word is just simply in the Greek, departure. On behalf of everyone at Grace Christian Assembly, we thank you for listening to this week's Salvation by Grace message. Remember to visit us on the internet at www.salvationbygrace.org. And we invite you to join us next time when we gather around the Word and study the sovereign grace of God.